Hey everybody, welcome to Ellis Mowers. I appreciate y'all watching the channel as always. Got another fix here. This one's for a Honda GCV 160. This one's on a pressure washer. Um, y'all have seen on the channel that um, the company HIPAA, the aftermarket parts company on Amazon, they also have a website, HIPAAstore.com. They have sent me another carburetor uh, for this Honda. We've done a bunch of two cycle stuff, we've done a couple of four cycle stuff, and Overall, things uh, things that they have sent me have done a good job. I have had one Tecumseh carburetor bowl gasket that did seat just a little bit. I was able to um, use the old bowl gasket and the old carb bowl from the um, old carburetor to get that going again. But apart from that, I think the other seven or eight products that they have sent me have been good. Hopefully, this one's going to be good as well. Uh, like I said, we're going to go ahead and get started on this uh, pressure washer. Again, if you have any questions about the video, you can reach out to me, ellis at ellismowers.com, or you can reach out to me at ellismowers09 on Instagram and Facebook. Also, I do have a partnership with HIPAA uh, on their website, hippastore.com. If you click the link below in the description, the top link will take you to uh, the page. If you buy using that link, then I get a small cut of the, um, of the purchase. So... Uh, also, I'll have a separate link to this exact carburetor down in the description below as well if you want to go just directly to that. Let's go ahead and get started on this pressure washer and uh, hopefully we can get this thing running and hopefully the pump and everything works still on it. As always with these HIPAA cars, we're going to start by looking at the product and how it came. This one came in a small box and it came with a carburetor and a fuel filter. We'll look at the fuel filter first. It's one of the small ones. Be good to put on a ride mower or something, really. I don't, don't really run fuel filters on push mowers. We have your carburetor itself. It even has like an imprint of GCV 160. We've got a choke on it which this one has a manual choke, so you might have to take the spring off of this to make it work properly. We'll see. Um, but this is a Huyai, so uh, Huyai Corporation carburetor. Comes with three gaskets as well, so that's kind of nice. One gasket, I guess, for the back and in the middle. Uh, in between, like, uh, it's like, you'll be like a little plate that we see. So this is, um, actually looks pretty decent. It looks better than most aftermarket carbs I get. So let's, uh, let's get started. I'll get a couple of 10 millimeters and that should be all that we need. Uh, and some fuel line pliers. All right, guys, now it's time to get started. Let's see if I can do this in one fell swoop here. Gas is empty. It kind of does smell like varnish. Fuel line looks okay. It is a little hard. We'll see if it holds. Air filter is air filter's brand new. That's always awesome. It's even got a new pre-filter in it. One less thing I have to replace. When I did get it, this guy did say that it would run, but the carburetor would leak at the needle and seat. And so Pippa provided me a carburetor. I'm going to swap it out. So, because I'm not really in the business of fixing needles and seats. So, our first, our first item that we get off is these 10 millimeter bolts. Let me finish on. Let me finish loosening these up and see if I can get them out here. Come on, guys. Come on, little buddy. Like a little rubber piece that it's trying to stick to. There we go. Oh, that's the gasket. So we got that out. Set that aside. Here's that gasket that we're going to replace with the one that we got from the package this is a little doodad here 
You can see you have your choke lever and whatnot that operates. You pull the choke out to engage it and disengage it. You push it back in. Um, looks like we need to take this third 10 millimeter bolt off. You do have your breather hose as well. We'll make sure that goes back on. Okay, so that allows the carburetor to drop and it also allows us to get the choke lever out of the way. We're going to keep that on off switch on there and now what we'll also do we'll pull it out of this hole as well and that way we can take this choke and just pull it up pull it up pull it out set it aside for a minute this Honda carburetor has some of them have like a little groove like uh, I don't know if this is like a Kohler clone I think some of them are kind of like this. And I bet this is. I bet this thing right here would almost directly fit on it. This is a Kohler carburetor. And it's almost a direct fit, it looks like. Just slightly different in a couple of aspects. Um, Alright, so let's see. This is another Z bend, so we can just take. What we need to do now is see if we can get the fuel line off. That fuel line might be a little tough. The thing about Honda is they like to use a little bit smaller fuel line and these weird clips so what I gotta do yeah just this thing is just ripping off so I'll just have to replace the line and the clips and we should be okay. I should have some line that works. But just take the Z-Bend off. Take your spring off. And voila, this thing's off now. So we don't have this big gasket. But I think it gets replaced with a smaller one. Which will work just fine on this backing plate. Uh, I think the only thing this does is potentially deflect some of the heat. But I don't think this thing makes enough heat to matter really. Cause this is going to try and break on me as I get it off, I think. Well, it didn't break on me too bad. It actually didn't break on me at all. So I'll see what I have in the pack. See what we can use to replace it with. Um, but I do need to source some new fuel line for this. And I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, go ahead and do that right now. Alright guys, well the benefit of having a garage is that I can still work when storms come. But, we're going to go ahead and uh, put the new one on here. Let me take a look at my gasket. Ensemble. Because it's a little bit of a fun time trying to do this. However, we're going to do it. I need this gasket, it appears, to go over this, like so. I've got two different ones. Let's see which one works better. Maybe they gave us two of the same. They did, but it works. This works just, this one works just fine. Just doesn't have the long handle on it, or the long bring down like the other one. I'm going to attach the linkage for the carburetor here and then the respective carburetor spring. Like so that gets us that gets us where we need to in order to get everything back on pretty much. Uh choke can come back as well like I said this is a uh, putting together the sandwich is the most difficult part here what I did is I did source some new fuel line well new to new to the pressure washer fuel line because it is smaller than the standard fuel line you find on most Briggs engines and most of the other engines I'm gonna mock it up that way I kind of know lengthwise what I need mm. 
there. I'll cut it off accordingly. I've done this on a few applications and it has seemed to work just fine. I've got the clip there for when we clip it back in. That might actually help to clip, go ahead and clip or put it back onto the carburetor as we get everything situated here. So let's do that. We can cut off some more as necessary. We'll put this clip back on. Come on. There we go. So now we will put choke cable back on, which will go on the front here. And now we can muster trying to get all of this carb assembly back on. Y'all might hear thunder in the background. I am safely in my garage, so do not worry about my well-being if you are concerned about that. Be just fine. So next order of business, we're gonna slide this back on. I probably will have to clip this fuel line back. I'm trying to slide everything back on here with gaskets and whatever. So I'm gonna do the whole shebang here. This gasket will go in front. It will go behind the air filter. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and put the air filter on with the gasket in relation to the way that it needs to be. So gasket is like this. Air filter is like this. So let's put that on. So that's the first thing. I have a secondary gasket. It's for it's a square. But I don't believe that goes anywhere for my application. Yeah, so this is what's going to happen here. We're going to put the air filter on through the bracket. And then <laughs> it's a little challenging here. So. Anyways, air filter through the bracket, <laughs> followed by through the carburetor. I got one side. Let's see if I can get the other here. All right, now we've got both of them through there. We'll get them stuck out on the other side. On this side as well. Okay, now we've got them stuck out on the other side. Now I will attach the gasket, which is going to go like this. You'll see a hole. I don't know how well it's showing up on the camera, but you'll see a hole right here. Your third gasket that we are not going to use because it's sealing just fine is the one that goes behind this backing plate for your carburetor. So it would probably go on something like that one of these ways. We're not going to worry about that because that backing plate is on there. I don't really have any interest in taking it off. So let's get this other carburetor or this other gasket on. The hole will be on the right and the, the thin part will be on the bottom. So we're going to pop it in here as the rain picks up outside. Did sell a mower today before it started raining, so that was kind of nice. But the, um, one thing you need to make sure you also do is make sure that you're
breather hose gets reattached. So reattach your breather hose. You can look around your right side kind of like I just did right there. We're going to get these threads started on this carburetor. I'll get a ratchet just to get everything started here. And then we'll go with the impact to finish it off. Oops. This is going to be for all three of these bolts that I do here. So we've got them in to start. I can go impact the rest of the way. Man, on days like today, I'm thankful for a garage. I'm going to put that third bolt in that you see right there. That's the third bolt that we took off. Attach it right there, attach it, attach it, don't go too far, make sure everything is nice and tight. Everything looks pretty darn good, so that's good. Let's get one quick hit. And, uh, so I've got the fill line attached. It looks good. It's not touching anything. The governor is free and all that good stuff. So now we wait on the rain. I'll put some gas in this and we'll see if this thing will run. All right, guys, so I've got the pressure washer on the uh, ground here. I didn't tell you all that this is a 2600 PSI Troy built with the Honda on it. And uh, we'll get those out of the way for now. This should work, technically. I, I know you're not supposed to run it without water attached to it. But I can run it for about 30 seconds or so. That way we will at least know if we've got any fuel leaks or any other fuel issues. So let me turn it on. Give it a choke. Give it a pull. See what happens. That's good. Man, that thing runs good too. Like I said, I'm not going to run it very long without it being uh, hooked up to water. But you can do that just to test it out so you don't have to go through the whole process. So um, I can call that carb a success for now. We're going to see whenever we start running some water through this thing if, uh, if we need to do anything else to it. Like I said, I hope the pump is good. I was told that the pump was good, that I had gas issues leaking out of the needle in the seat. So, I don't know for sure if that's the case with that other carburetor, but like I said, for like 20 bucks, we know for sure that we have good insides of this pressure washer. When this thunder and lightning and rain quits, I will get back to this and I will let you know what ends up happening with it. All right, guys, I got it hooked up to the water. Now we're going to see if it'll run and the pressure washer pump will pump. It seems like we have a good potential because when I spray, it seems like it's spraying okay. So without the pump going on, so let's see if we can crank it up here.
So something's happened inside the pump or debris or something. So I'm going to work on that a little bit. And I'll see what we can do here in just a minute. But it was spraying freely just a second ago. So I've got some sort of obstruction somewhere. Oh, maybe it's coming back. Try it again. Got some sort of obstruction in the pump that I want to see if I can figure out. If not, this might be turned into a uh, push mower engine. All right, guys. Well, after a lot of uh, work in here and literally just pulling the trigger, pulling the trigger. Binding up anymore, which is great. And it has just got a D. I don't think it's got 2600 on it anymore, but it's probably got about 15 to 16. running good. Alright guys, I'm going to wash this off here and y'all get just the same about the pump this is about the uh carburetor and the carburetor work works great on it um i'm actually surprised i kind of brought the pump back too um but hey whatever whatever we got going i'll wrap this video up here here in uh just a minute i'll do a little bit more testing here first all right guys so that is everything on this again i want to thank hipaa for providing the carburetor for this it seems like it uh fix the running issue and um, actually when there was no water coming out of that pump I said this pump is done and I just kept pressing and pressing and pressing and it ended up finally getting some pressure I don't think it's 2600 pounds PSI worth but it is a usable amount from what I can tell so.
So it seems like it's a little bit better. Um, and should be able to make a little bit of money off of it. I hate that it's not the full 2600 PSI because this thing will be one powerful beast. But um, it'll it'll do the jobs that most people need to do with a with a pressure washer. They even got the little wash wash port hooked up with soap still, so that's kind of nice. Um, but like I said, the premise wasn't really to see if the pressure washer would pressure wash it was just to get it running again just to show you that the tip of car rate will do what it needs to do so thank you all again for watching i really do appreciate it it's y'all watching these videos that help companies seek me out and uh let me try their products out to see if i can get what something is down in the count back going again and this is another one um it did not turn out 100 percent like i want to it's probably about 75 to 80. i will disclose that i think the pressure is a little on the weaker side but the pump is still pumping and probably still get about $75 for it which is fine anyways I appreciate it again if you have any questions about this video or any video on the channel you can reach me ellis at ellismowers.com or at ellismowers09 on Instagram and Facebook and I'll catch y'all in the next video see you then